Today I'm going to talk to you about uh, leadership and just a little bit how leadership and how us as leaders, especially in the construction industry, how we can do more to actually get more out of the people we work with, get more out of our teams. And as you mentioned earlier on, there is skill shortages, so how can we do more with what we have as we start out? So just a little bit about myself, I work as a, as a, as a coach, a, a business consultant basically, and what I do is specialise in an area called Lean and Six Sigma, which basically does process improvement in organisations. So we provide consultancy to businesses that are looking to change um, and are looking just to do more of what they have. I spent 12 years in the front line essentially, um, in retail operations management, and then followed by that seven years in consultancy training and coaching. And to help me get on top of all of the process work that goes on, and to understand that really it is people that are core to process change. I actually went back to college and studied psychology because um, it was that necessary. When we work with organizations, we take them through a four-stage process. First of all, we go through a discovery phase to see if there is an opportunity to consult. Then we consult with them. So that's about giving them advice about Lean and Six Sigma, where their processes can improve. But the real difference with Lean and Six Sigma over typical consultancy is that you aim to transfer the skills in-house. So you develop the organization and then once the skills are transferred in-house, you step back and then you provide coaching and mentoring to the organizations. So some of the challenges that I face on a daily basis going into organizations, as I said, I come from a services background, so I tend to operate in a services background for Lean. And what we see is the right application of tools, so taking manufacturing tools and applying them into the service sector. You then see, because humans are involved in the process, we're not making widgets, so there's people involved in all the processes. So what we do is that there tends to be a certain amount of task complexity and variation when people are working together. But more importantly, you can see there's issues with communication, organizational vision, organizational vision, and a lack of clarity of what's going on. But the two key things I'm going to talk to you about today are actually engagement and leadership. So just as a quick exercise, can everybody think of a great leader? Does anybody want to volunteer their answer? Enda Kenny. Great. Anyone else have an example of a good leader? Richard Branson, okay. Does anybody think of a leader in the construction industry? No. It's, it's probably part of the problem within the, in the industry. There's a lack of clear visionary leadership. Now, one of the leaders that's actually coming to the fore at the moment is this guy who's in development. And we can see that, that leadership it can be good or bad. Say what you want, he probably is a good leader. He's aligned followers behind him. It's just that the vision or the mission that he has is probably somewhat corrupt. And it feeds into the problem around leadership and engagement. I said, how do we actually define these terms? And we get stuck in these kind of fluffy definitions. And it reminds me of this Indian proverb of it asking four blind men to d describe an elephant. And they each take a different part and come up with four very distinct definitions of what leadership is. And engagement is the same. So, what is employee engagement? Well, employee engagement is a positive, fulfilling, uh, work-related state of mind in which people actually want to be there. People tend to do more with less, they act with vigour, they act with dedication and they act with absorption. And it's intrinsically motivated. It's not affected by the amount of money people are employed, it's that something they actually want to do. Now, where it would help in the skill shortages sector is that it helps with retention. The pay attracts people into the organisation, but having people engaged will help retain them. And it also affects uh, in terms of productivity as well. And we can see even Dilber says that employee engagement is really about people doing more for the same amount of pay and then being happier actually doing it. Now where this leads into productivity is an area called discretionary effort. Now discretionary effort Excuse me. Discretionary effort is the difference between what we can do and what we actually do do. And that is delivered intrinsically. So we do it because we want to do it. So an employee who's displaying discretionary effort puts in that extra work because they want to do it, not because they've been told to do it. And Gallup have gauged that discretionary effort as being worth 20%. Now, if I gave in terms of productivity, now if I came in as a consultant and said, we can increase your productivity by 20% by changing your, your processes, you jump on that choice and that option. Where in fact, if we can change just a little bit of what we do as leaders, we can actually tap into that discretionary effort as well. 
So, what is it that engages teams and what motivates teams and what does it in the construction industry? Is it wheelbarrows full of cash? Is it the 60,000 sterling that they're offering from the UK? What motivates teams once we have them on site? Is it free breakfast rolls? Is this what we can give them? And as leaders, what is it that we can do to engage our teams? How can we motivate them and how can we increase productivity? Now typically what organisations do is when they look to improve in these aspects, they tend to bring in a team of consultants and they come in fully engaged, going to sort out all the problems. But what do consultants see when they come in? What's described to them? Leaders tend to describe problems with processes, problems with teams and problems with people underperforming or being underutilised. And yes, all of that is potentially true. In large cases it is also true. But also what you're faced with as a consultant, as in a lean world, coming in to look at productivity, you're also faced with very distinct different types of leadership. Anywhere from Hitler up to God himself. And if any of you have worked in any of the places that I've worked, you've probably had the same leader who displays all of these characteristics in the space of one conversation. And these actually impact on productivity and on engagement. So this example here is pretty much the full range of leadership, okay? And there is what's called the full range leadership model, which takes us from this passive avoidant leadership, which basically is the leader who does nothing, to your transactional leadership, which is essentially a manager, and then your transformational leadership, transformational leader, which inspires. Now, as I mentioned a few slides ago, to help me kind of get to grips with how complicated people are when you're working as a consultant in, 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 in Lean, I actually went back to college and I studied a degree in psychology. I still wouldn't claim to know enough, but it helped. So as part of that, we carried out some research to see, does leadership actually contribute to employee engagement? And can we actually tap into that 20% productivity before we even start on our change initiatives? Well, the answer is yes, pretty much. If you can operate in as a transformational leader, it actually predicts levels, positively predicts levels of employee engagement. Not only that, if you are a transformational leadership, if you do engage your employees, all of the change initiatives that you attempt to implement, which will further increase productivity, actually are more sustainable and more successful. And transformational leaders also score high on transactional leaders. So it's, it, it's important that leaders aren't just one level, they have to move between the roles, they have to understand the situation in which they're operating and adjust their style uh, accordingly. So it does leave a burning question, as with any kind of academic research, and I know a few academics here, you've done the research, so what? What does it all mean? Well, really what it means is that if we expect our teams to change, the leader really needs to examine themselves first and check that their behaviour is right and is creating the correct culture for that change to, to occur. If you adapt the leader's style, you can increase engagement, you can increase the discretionary effort, which remember is worth up to 20%, and you can increase the likelihood of successful and sustained improvement initiatives. So as we go to all that effort with our lean initiatives, our lean programs, reviewing our processes, if we don't check the leadership at the start and check the culture at the start, we could be wasting our time. So, how to be more transformational? Really it's about emotional intelligence as a start, but there's four simple kind of steps we can do. We can work by building trust and acting with integrity with our, with our teams. We can coach people instead of telling people and we can encourage innovative thought. Not only that, we need to inspire people by our own behaviours and our actions. And by doing so, you will increase the levels of engagement. Having an engaged workforce is important, but it's also important not to disengage the workforce. Because while engaged workers will actually work with passion, do more, to be better for the company, if they're unhappy, if they're disengaged, they'll actually work against your efforts and they'll attempt to undermine what you try to do. And if we are competing with the, con if the construction industry is competing with IT to draw people back, all of these ITC sectors and these organisations, they are operating these engagement programmes. They are looking to retain staff as well as attract them. So the competition is on. 
So, like I said, why does it matter to construction? So there is a lack of leadership in, in the construction industry. Visible leadership, that's not to say leaders don't exist, but visible tip of the tongue leaders, they aren't there. As you said, none of us were able to name an influential leadership leader in the construction industry. It's difficult to attract new entrants, and with millennials being as picky as everybody says they are, it's harder to draw them into the actual construction industry. The initiative by yourselves there with the Girl Guides was, was great. You're attempting to get people, get their interest, get their interest in apprenticeships and take them in from a young age. But that, that needs to be focused on and it needs to be really structured to achieve it. It's also difficult to retain staff. Yes, the wheelbarrow of money will draw them in the door, but once you get them in, especially if you're dealing with contractors, how do you create the right culture in an organisation, especially full of contractors, to actually retain people and have them promote your business to get more people in? And that skill shortage that was in 2008 from the CIOB report, it is actually worse. It's actually worsened. Um, so having the people, retaining the people that we have, engaging them more, getting the most amount of, out of them through discretionary effort, through correct culture, having them promote the business you know, as a place to work, as a career to step into, is actually really important. But I don't want to leave you on a bad note. Leadership isn't, um, it isn't voodoo. It's, 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 it's not black magic. It isn't very difficult. Um, I think so often when you go to leadership summits and stuff like that, they have fancy pictures of Mount Everest and how we should all be attempting to climb it to reach the pinnacle of success. Really, we just need to be a bit better. Um, and every day we just need to be a bit better at what we do as leaders just focus on our behaviours and how they impact on, on the people that we work with. And this full range leadership model really provides those steps. We can take people from your Ricky Gervais or your David Brents up to your evil Mr Burns and into transformational leaders. And knowing that in circumstances where tax task complexity is an issue or people need to be really trained, we need to step back into this contingent reward area and then back up into the transformational area. So, just to finish briefly, leadership isn't just about making, leadership is about making others better as a result of our presence, but it's also about making an impact that lasts in our absence as well.